On today's show, I am reviewing what the Rangers did in center field this year, what went right for Leody Tavares, what went wrong, and how long is he going to stay there as the Rangers center fielder. All that and more on this episode of Locked on Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked onto the Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Paddock, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan since 2010, the founder and host for all four seasons of this Locked On Rangers podcast. Today is Thursday, November 3rd, and the World Series is unfortunately tied up 2-2. Two to two. Thank you all so much for making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers and subscribe on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment any single thing below. Now on today's show, I'm going to be talking about center field, what Leody Tavares did, what some of the other players who played center field did, and how long it is going to be Leody Tavares' job to lose. But just before I get into that, just just a totally random aside, nothing to do with any baseball games that have been played in the last couple of days. I think that uh, combined no hitters are, are stupid and silly and um, aren't, don't count. Um, anyway, totally, totally non sequitur. Um, but let's get into center field. This year, Leody Tavares was by far the primary center fielder for the Rangers this season. He played 93 games in center field. Next closest was Adoles Garcia, who had 57 games out there. Eli White had 22. He was kind of manning it quite a bit from the start, doing a pretty good job there. Got nine games from Bubba Thompson, four from old Steven Duggar, and yeah, one random game from Cole Calhoun in center field when things were extremely dire. But Leody had a great start to the season. Overall, on the year, he ended up playing in 99 games at the big league level, finished with 14 doubles, two triples, five home runs, a slash line of 261, 309, 366. That's a 675 OPS, which was 7% below the league average for center fielders, which if you had told me that was what he was going to put up going into the season, I would have said, you know, that's fine. That's fine. That's about what you expect from Leody. Now, when he was coming up, uh, the idealized version of Leody was a guy who would hit, you know, 280 or something with an on base around like 350 with like really great on base skills and maybe Homer like, I don't know, 15 ish times a year while playing just absolutely elite center field defense, which, you know, for the most part he did this year, but he kind of had a little bit of a regression and it was a great, great start to the season for him, took a little while to get going. The first half was absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely just the bee's knees. 30 games before the All-Star break. He had nine doubles, three homers, five stolen bases, just caught stealing twice. A slash line of 341, 367, 553. A 920 OPS from a guy who was just pretty much an elite, elite, elite defensive center fielder with a huge arm great speed and making great reads in the outfield. And his bat was just a lot of it was these bloop singles that were falling in. I mean, he had just the absolute worst luck last year. Everything just went the worst way for him. It was nice to see him get some early success and kind of say, Hey, I deserve to be here in the big leagues. I have earned my place. And he, he really did. It took him a while to get called up. It was, uh, I think, May, by the end of May, around June-ish, when the Rangers finally decided to call him up. He had a really, really great start to his AAA season, went through a little bit of a slump, and the Rangers wanted to see him pull himself out of that slump before they called him back up. In 49 games in AAA this year, he ended up with seven home runs, 12 doubles, and three triples, and an 820 OPS on base in the 330s, slugged 585. He started to show a little bit more power in 2021 in that season with 17 homers at the minor league level in 87 games, then came up to the big leagues, did end up with three homers at the big league level, but overall offensively, it was just a horrible, horrible go for him. So the Rangers wanted to make sure that just because he was hot at the beginning of the season didn't mean that he had figured out how to make all of those changes and figure out how to combat some of those slumping streaks and, 
you know, credit to him, he he did, and he really, really thrived in that first half. It didn't go as great for him in the second half. We'll get into that a little bit later. But we also saw some center field time from Bubba Thompson. Talked a lot about him on the, I believe, Tuesday episode when I reviewed left field. Also got to see quite a bit of time from Adolis Garcia in center field. Not as much time as he played in center last year as the Rangers' primary center fielder, kind of bouncing around everywhere. But again, a really, really solid year for him, both offensively and defensively. Last year, he played, Adolis Garcia played 79 games in center field and 51 in right. This year, he played 93 in right and 57 in center field. Only started 45 games for the Rangers, though, in center field. A lot of uh, late switching uh, with some other stuff going around. But still, I think... I think Adolis Garcia's best overall position is going to be right field. His sprint speed, um, it, it kind of fell off this year, a little surprisingly. Last year, he was in the 83rd percentile for sprint speed. This year, he was in the 66th percentile in sprint speed. His arm strength was still great this year, but his outs above average and outfielder jump dropped down just a little bit, even though he's playing primarily right field as opposed to center field. That was a little bit confusing, and some of the other Defensive numbers for Leoti were a little bit confusing. But again, I talked a little bit about Eli White and how great a season he had. He was still in the top 12 most valuable Rangers players, according to Baseball Reference, had a one-war season, according to Baseball Ref, which was the 11th most valuable player for the Rangers um, by war metrics, just behind Dane Dunning at 1.1 and just ahead of Jose Clerk at 0.9. But... Uh, Leody Tavares was just left off of that a .8 worse even, despite playing several more games than Eli White. But Eli White's defense was absolutely phenomenal. And in left field, he was so much better than the average left fielder with a little bit of time um, from him and Leody. I think they I think they were up right around the same time. Saw a lot of Adoles Garcia in center field early. And then once Leody came up, it was more... Leody's job in center with the occasional spell from Adolis Garcia as opposed to Adolis there and uh, Leody not being at the major league level. But there were there were some some setbacks from center field this year from Adolis from uh, or excuse me from Leody from even Bobby Thompson and a little bit from Eli White. We're going to get into some of those and what might be the fix to those problems. But first, this episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. Did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries and package thefts spike nationally? That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report, a third year in a row. In an emergency, 24/7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technologies exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real, so you can get priority police response. Simply Safe is a whole home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, door. HD security cameras for inside and out, smarter ways to detect motion that alert you when the threat is real, and even hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats for your home. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. Uh, there's the biggest discount of the year. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Now, some of the negatives. Obviously, if you were watching a whole lot in the second half of the season, you could tell it was not Leody Tavares' best offensive showing. In 69 games in the second half, which is a nice number, the numbers were not so nice. He had a slash line of 231 on base of 288. Slugged 297 with a 585 OPS. That is, uh, let's see, doing the math, 335? Yes, 335 points lower than his first half uh, splits. Not, not a great way to end it. But he did finish off the season with a couple of home runs in that final series to kind of save what had been just really just straight-up awful 
uh, last two months of the season. The last month, um, at September, October, he played in 31 games with a 514 OPS, by far his lowest month of the season. In August, it wasn't a whole lot better. Didn't have any home runs in the month of August. Uh, a 602 OPS in that month and on base below 300, slugging just barely above 300 at 309. Just not a great way to uh, to go about things in that month of August when the Rangers were really, really scuffling. That is when he only got his only two triples of the season, but overall, not a great month. And uh, on the base paths, not a great month or not a great season for him uh, at the big league level. He had been fantastic, elite. He still had pretty good numbers, but not... Not what you'd expect for a base base stealer of his caliber. In 2020, when he first came up and played 33 games, he went 8-for-8, uh, eight eight, did not get caught stealing in his first eight attempts. Last year, even though the offensive numbers were pretty atrocious, he went 10-for-11 on stolen bases, only got caught once. This year, he stole 11 bases but was caught stealing five times. Not exactly what you're looking for. Even at the minor league level this year, was was not great numbers. 7 uh, seven steals and four caught stealing. Not really the success rate that you'd expect for a guy with his elite speed speed and really great base running instincts. And the advanced numbers didn't like Leo Tavares nearly as much this year as they have in years past. They had his outfielder jump in the 60th percentile, which was uh, very shocking and surprising from a guy who has been just absolutely elite defensively. Obviously, his arm strength is, we talked about that a lot. He had the Best arm strength of any outfielder on the team, even more so than Adolis Garcia, which was very surprising, but it, it's true. It's very true. Um, he was in the 98th percentile for arm strength in the top 10 actual players in arm strength, which was uh, really, really impressive. Sprint speed, the top 4% of all baseball. Outs above average dipped from uh, where it was in, I believe, let's see. It, it didn't rank him last year because he didn't play enough games. Um, but this year it was at, where'd we go? Why is it taking this from me? Okay. Yeah. The 87th percentile. And uh, yeah, not exactly where I thought. I thought he'd be a little bit higher on that. Still, still a good place to be, but not exactly elite like you would expect. But uh, some of the things that he, he did better than I expected were his max exit velocity was way, way higher than I thought it would be, and his ag- average exit velocity, too. His average exit velo was in the top half of baseball, 55th percentile, max exit velo in the 88th percentile, which means... But also, he wasn't barreling pitches a whole lot, the expected slugging, and some of those numbers were not great, and the hard, hard hit percentage was also not great in around the bottom quarter of baseball. But still, the average eggs of Velo was still in the top half of baseball, which I don't know exactly what that means, but my assumption, based on my understanding of math and how numbers work, is that he didn't hit a whole lot of balls hard, but when he got a hold of one, boy howdy, he absolutely freaking crushed him. We have seen him get into some pitches. He's got He's got a lot more raw power than shows off in games. And uh, his approach hasn't translated as well to the big league level as I thought it would. I mean, he was supposed to be a really, really advanced hitter. That's why he's had all this top prospect shine. But the one thing that has still never gone away is his elite glove, his elite speed, and his big old arm patrolling there in center field can provide a whole lot of value defensively. The advanced war metrics did not like his defense this year at baseball reference had his d war at exactly zero so right at league average which does not make sense in 99 games for a guy who is an elite center fielder we saw him make a few more boneheaded plays than we had seen before which was not very typical of him but that was definitely the aberration not the norm this year still made some really great catches some really great routes and some really big throws last year he had a d war of 0.8 according to baseball reference and the year before in 33 games he had a 0.7 d war which i believe was in the top 10 of all of major league baseball in that shortened season even though he played around half the season that's how good he was defensively in his first year in the big leagues but 
this was not as great a season for him. I'm sure he is going to bounce back. Some of the uh, predictions on him this year had him at a 1.6 Fangraphs war. Um, his weighted run created plus was about 5% better than they expected. Same with the Woba. But again, I don't think they expected how bad this final two months of the season would be. He did finish with a 1.2 uh, Fangraphs war, which did like him just a little bit better. The Fangraphs uh, prediction, composite predictions had him playing 128 games this year with 13 homers, um, an on base of 293, and slugging 370. His slugging was four points below that, but his on base was uh, quite a bit higher than that. If he had played all of those games, I think he probably would have ended up with a 1.6 baseball reference war. But we've seen what mediocre to subpar offensive. Uh, center fielders can do if they have that elite, elite defensive instincts and uh, ability to patrol in center field and what they can make up for for some of their less talented, less uh, less rangy outfield counterparts. I mean, we're seeing it in the World Series. We've seen it with the Phillies uh, for most of the second half and uh, in the playoffs specifically with Brandon Marsh being an elite defensive center fielder and having Nick Castellanos on one side and Kyle Schwarber on the other side, he has made their outfield fine, fine. Now the Rangers don't have a Nick Castellanos in right field. Adolis Garcia is a really good uh, defensive right fielder. And depending on who's in left, whether it's it's Bubba or whoever it is, I'm pretty sure they're going to be better defensively than Kyle Schwarber. But still having average guys and a elite defensive center fielder can make a real big difference, especially if you've got some pitchers who are a little bit more prone to fly balls um, like like a John Gray and like somehow Dane Dunning is becoming, unfortunately. But I think that can provide a whole, whole lot of value that people don't necessarily always see. Coming up, we're going to look at what's expected from what we should expect from Leody Tavares next year if there's going to be a change in center field and where that change might come from. But first, let's word from our sponsors. So I think out of camp, it's definitely going to be Leody Tavares' job to lose. There will be a little bit of competition, some coming from Bob Thompson, some probably coming from Eli White. Maybe Josh Smith gets a look. Maybe Adolis Garcia gets a little bit more of a look. If the Rangers want to go and put Adolis in center field, I don't think that's necessarily the best option if they're going to go spend some money on an outfielder. It, it's almost certainly going to be for left field. But internally, I think that's where the competition is going to come from. If they do want to go for the free agent route, there's not a whole lot of options in center field. If you believe that Aaron Judge is a center fielder and you want to go throw all your money at that and say, you know what, to heck with pitching, we're going to get a bunch of mediocre starters and just bomb the crap out of everybody. Um, well, it's, it's working-ish for the Phillies, but they also have two top-end starters and the rest of mediocre starters. I, I don't think that's going to necessarily work out for the Rangers' favor. But maybe it could get them to the playoffs. I mean, who knows? There's also Brandon Nimmo as an option who played center field for the Mets this year. I think that's a really enticing option. I might prefer him in left as opposed to Leody, but some of the advanced metrics like him a little bit better in center field this year. I don't think that's necessarily going to hold up next year. I don't know what the deal was with Leody's defense this year, but I do think he is absolutely going to rebound and have a much, much better season defensively next year. If you want to upgrade offensively, then I totally get that. There's also Kevin Kiermeyer if if you want to take a shot at that. But other than that, not a whole lot of options for center field. On the farm, guys who are going to push him, maybe Ezekiel Duran ends up as a center fielder. Maybe Josh Smith gets some time at center field. I think Leody was providing more with his offense than Josh Smith was this year. But I do think Smith could hold down center field pretty well. I think Ezekiel Duran could also hold that down pretty well. He doesn't have as big an arm as Leody doesn't have the... Uh, experience the amount of years and uh you know time under his belt at center field but he did play 10 games of center field when the rangers sent him back down to triple he also played seven games in left field so he was definitely getting his reps out there and josh smith has gotten quite a few reps in center field didn't get any at the major league level this year but we did see him in center field in triple a just a splash before he got his call up this year and I think we could probably see him in center field at some point next year. I don't know about as a primary starter or anything like that, 
but I think that is definitely something to look out for. If you're looking on the farm for options to eventually replace Leody, I think Evan Carter is is going to be the guy. I it's obviously there's nobody on this farm that has the same defensive instincts and overall profile uh, in center field as Leody. There's not a whole lot of players in baseball that have that profile that can do the things that he does. I mean, Kevin Kiermaier at his peak was kind of there. Trent Grisham right now is, is kind of there, but Leody is, is really, really up there in terms of the best defensive center fielders. And I don't know how he wasn't even named a finalist this year. Looking a little bit more at the metrics, I kind of see why. But overall, just the defensive reputation that he has is well-earned as an elite defender, and that is his primary value. But offensively, he is not quite living up to the billing. I don't think he's going to have a season where he has sustained that first-half success in that little 30-game sample size of a bunch of little bloopers, uh, you know, dropping in and him getting these bloop doubles all over the place and nine doubles in a month. A lot of those were not necessarily ones that were lined to the gap and he just, um, you know, cruised into second base. A lot of them were kind of bloopers down the foul pole and he just used his elite speed to get on, which again, those still count as doubles. He's still standing on second base and uh, there's, there's still some value in that, but I don't necessarily think they're super, super repeatable. But Evan Carter is, is I think, at this point, the man of the future in center field. Uh, eventually, I think there is a way that he and Leody could you know, coincide with Leody in center field and him in right field. But I think the overall offensive upgrade is, is going to be pretty substantial. And I think the defensive drop-up is not going to be that bad. I haven't seen him in person in center field, but the reports that I've heard is that he is pretty legitimate center fielder. The speed is is more than good enough to handle the position. Got a decent arm, makes some pretty good jumps, and that's where he has played the vast majority of his minor league baseball has been in center field. He has played 72 games in Hickory uh, this year, and he DH'd for 17 games, played uh, three games in right field this year for Frisco, two games in center field during the regular season, and DH'd just one game in uh, 2021 when he only played 30 games he played all of those in the outfield playing center field for the down east wood decks as an 18 year old in 2021 so center field is pretty much his position and i think the offense is going to be fantastic one of the i think he has the potential to be one of the better offensive center fielders once he comes up and hits his full stride and his potential The kid has been fantastic. He is still so young. He just turned 20 uh, on August 29th. He is going to be 20 for the entirety of the season. And I really do think that he could be pushing for a big league roster spot slash starting spot by the end of 2023. He is just that good and that advanced. Pretty sure he's going to start the season in double A, but I don't think it's going to be long before they push him up to triple A. And if he dominates at triple A, I don't know, maybe by August he is pushing for the big league club. I don't think he's going to push for it out of camp. I think the Rangers are going to be, you know, he he did dominate in the playoffs offensively in his small sample size in Frisco towards the, at the end of the season, once his high A season was done, he more than held his own, helped Texas get to, uh, helped Frisco get to a Texas league championship. And I think that was a really nice experience for him. Just honestly getting more games under his belt at double A and against some of the better double A teams in the league. And he more than held his own and kind of helped push this offense at times, um, be a, a real engine at the top of the order. And I really, really do think that this guy could be seeing Arlington by sometime in August of 2023, which is just really, really exciting for a guy who at the time of the draft was just the most confusing pick and is looking like one of the best Rangers draft picks in the late in the last half decade. And he's not even in AAA just yet. But I think Leody has the potential to be a really good overall center fielder hold down that job and make the Rangers say, you know what? Leody is such a good defensive center fielder and his offense is about league average. If he can just get his offense to, you know, league average for a center fielder and get back to his elite defensive ways, this is, this is an outfield that is made that much better. You could have 
<clears throat> Evan Carter, not Aaron Carter, as your right fielder of the future, and then Aaron Zavala in left field for the foreseeable future and have these guys on the cheap and performing pretty darn well. Plus, you have Adoles Garcia still for the next, I don't know, four seasons? So there's not a whole lot of need to go get some outside help because the Rangers have some depth at center field, and I think they're definitely going to use it. Hoping to see a better season from Leoti overall next year. It was nice for him to end it on a really, really good note, and it was nice for him to be able to start his major league season on such a great note. I think he is a big leaguer. I think the Rangers could definitely use him and someone with his skill set. I'm just hoping that the offense can catch up to where it needs to be for him to be an everyday starting player. But that's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Rangers. I'm going to be doing a mailbag on Monday, so I'm going to be putting out a tweet later today to send your questions in. I'm going to start doing that during the offseason, just a Monday mailbag episode so y'all can hear what you want to hear from me. That would be um, really big help if y'all could send in some questions there. Tomorrow's episode, I think I'm going to be doing a little bit of review of the bullpen, maybe a little bit of a general a general preview of what the Rangers need in free agency. Who knows? Dealer's choice. We will see tomorrow. But that'll do it for today's episode of Locked on Rangers. Thanks again for making us your first listen every single day for your next listen. Check out Locked on Sports today. From games that matter, the biggest stories in sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights on only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports today is available on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. Thank y'all so much for listening and subscribing. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy baseball.